So I'm here at the Perrine Bridge in Twin Falls, Idaho, uh, looking down into the Snake River Canyon. This big 500 foot deep canyon you can see below me here. Uh, the Snake River Canyon has its own geological story, one of uh, volcanic activity, uh, the cutting of the Snake River to make this canyon, the Bonneville Flood, lots of chapters to that story. But I thought we would spend a little bit of time here uh, with this video looking at some really interesting evidence of the interaction between lava and water that's taken place here in southern Idaho. And if you think about it, lava and water want to get to the same place. They both want to get to the lowest point. They travel down here, hill, under the influence of gravity and ultimately end up at the lowest point in any landscape. Um, so if you think about it, you oftentimes have lakes or ponds or, or streams occupying the low places in any given landscape. And if a volcano were to erupt and have lava coming out of that volcano, it would also end up moving into that body of water, into that low point there. And right here underneath the Prime Bridge, we have a great example of that. So if we walk over here, we can see uh, that we have some basalt. So this rock here is basalt. This is the lava uh, that's cooled and solidified that we see in so many places uh, in southern Idaho. But what's interesting here is the lava here has this kind of round kind of lobe shape to it. So you can kind of see these rounded uh, kind of lobes that are here. And these are called pillow lavas. So this is actually great evidence that these lavas flowed into some body of water. And if you kind of look through this area here, you can see that there's uh, several of them. The, the basalt looks a little bit different. It often has this kind of glassy rind to it and kind of this brownish coating here. This is actually a, a material called pelagonite where the uh, lava has interacted with the water. So here you can actually see one specific lobe of lava that came down uh, and as it's moving into the water, it's being cooled and quenched quite quickly, forming this kind of glassy outer rind. Uh, and then the interior can cool a little bit more slowly because it's insulated somewhat from the water. So again, great evidence here right under the Prime Bridge of lava basically moving into water. If we move up a little bit, you can see that there's kind of a sharp contact there where the pillow lava, the pillow basalt, uh, ends and more typical basalt is above it. So that would sort of represent uh, the watermark, right? This was lava that was underwater and this was lava that was not below water. So the big question here, of course, is what water body was here? Was it the Snake River? Uh, was it some other, maybe like small lake or pond or something like that? Uh, and we really don't have any way of knowing. There is a place further upstream where we can see some of these pillow lava structures sitting right on top of uh, gravels, uh, lots of gravels that look like they came from the Snake River. But here we can't see anything below this level, so it might have just been flowing into some sort of little pond or small little lake or a wetland or something like that. So again, really cool evidence here uh, in the Snake River Canyon of the interaction between lava and water.